It's me, Debbie Fry from Mary Mother of God, and I'm going to be leading Children's Liturgy of the Word this week, and I'm going to be doing it from here in my house, and you're going to be doing it from your house as well. You'll see that I set a sacred space for me while I'm praying. I have my very favorite picture of Jesus. I love this picture. I love to look at it when I'm learning about him. I have a, a favorite statue of Mother Mary and baby Jesus that was actually my grandmother's. And of course, my Christ candle because Jesus is our light. So I invite you next Sunday when we do this again to take a table somewhere in your house and find a few things around your house and set your own sacred space for you while you're praying. Now today is the fourth Sunday of Lent and that's actually called Latare Sunday. And Latare literally means to rejoice because we're moving closer to Easter. That's why I'm wearing this sweater. It's not pink, it's actually rose. It's a little darker than pink. And rose is the symbol for Latare, which means to rejoice. So if we were at mass together, you would see Father Isaac wearing rose instead of purple as a sign that we are moving closer to Easter. And I know Easter probably seems very far away for a lot of us while we're under this quarantine, but we just remember that Jesus is our hope. And we're going to call upon his name as we begin in prayer. As always, boys and girls, join me as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, because you belong to the Father and we belong to you, we are called to become like you, good, honest, and truthful. Forgive us our sins and help us to grow in your love, that through our words and deeds you may be praised forever and ever. Amen. Now I'm going to go ahead and light our Jesus candle. There we go. Hopefully you'll have a candle next week when we do this too. Maybe a battery operated candle like this if you have one in your house. And the story we're going to hear today is from the Gospel of John. And it's a story about a blind man. And this blind man is going to receive two very special miracles. First of all, he's going to be able to see. And second of all, he's going to get to see Jesus, and he's going to get to know that Jesus is the Lord. So listen with me as we begin this story. The Lord be with you, and you say, and with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel of John. As Jesus walked by, he saw a beggar who was born blind. Jesus spat on the ground, mixed the spit and the dirt together to make mud, and rubbed the mud into the man's eyes. Go wash your eyes in the Siloam pool, Jesus told him. The man left and washed the mud off. Now he could see. Many people used to walk by the man as he begged, and these people and the man's neighbors wondered, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? At this, there was an argument. Yes, he's the man, some said, but others disagreed. He just looks like that man. Finally, the man answered, I'm the beggar. Then they brought the beggar to religious leaders called Pharisees. When the leaders found out Jesus made mud and healed the man on the Sabbath, they questioned him. How did you get your sight back? They demanded. This man came by and put mud on my eyes. I washed it off, the beggar replied. Now I can see. Well, God commanded us not to do any work on the Sabbath. This man broke God's law when he cured you, some of the Pharisees stated. So this man cannot come from God. But other leaders disagreed. How can a man who breaks God's love law do such great things, they said. So an argument broke out among the Pharisees. In the end, they asked the beggar, What's your opinion of the man who healed you? He's a prophet, the man replied. At this, the Pharisees got angry. You've been evil ever since you were born. How dare you tell us what to think, they shouted at the man. Then they threw him out. Jesus heard what happened to the beggar. When Jesus found the man, he asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Point him out so I can believe in him, the beggar responded. You have already seen him, Jesus said. That person is talking to you right now. I trust you, Lord, the man said. Then he bowed and worshiped Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, boys and girls, I want you to do something for me so we can learn a little bit more about this story of the blind man and Jesus. And I'm gonna to have to take my glasses off for this. And if you wear glasses, you're gonna to have to take yours off too. 
here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your hands, the palms of your hands, just like this, and I want you to press them up against your eyes, just like this, okay? I want you to use the palms of your hands because when you press your palms against your eyes, then no light can come in, okay? So I want you to put your palms up to your eyes, just like this, and I want you to keep them like that, and I want you to just listen to my voice, okay? And I want you to think about the blind man. The darkness that you see right now, this is the darkness that he saw every minute of every single day of his life. And he could hear people's voices like you can hear my voice. But he couldn't see anything. And yet he had faith. He trusted Jesus. He must have trusted Jesus because Jesus belt, uh, knelt down and he put mud on the man's eyes. Now, if you're blind and someone touches you, maybe you might want to jump or flinch or back away. But this blind man didn't do that. He trusted Jesus. He trusted Jesus while Jesus was spreading mud onto his eyes. I wonder what that would have felt like. I wonder if it felt like paste or glue. I wonder if maybe it felt a little sandy from the dirt. But the man trusted him while he did this. And then Jesus said to him, go down to the Siloam pool and wash the mud off. That would have been hard for the blind man. It would have been hard for him to find his way there and to make his way into the pool. But he trusted Jesus. Jesus didn't heal him right then and there. And Jesus does that sometimes, doesn't he? He asks us to participate in the miracle that he's performing. So the blind man went down to the pool. He made his way down there in the darkness. He felt his way into the pool. And then once he was in the water, he filled his hands with water and he brought the water to his eyes. And he began to rub the mud from his eyes. So boys and girls, right now I want you to take your fingertips and I want you to just rub your eyes very gently. Rub your eyes. Imagine that you're rubbing the mud off. And then I want you to open your eyes. Are you blinking? Is it taking a minute for your eyes to adjust to the light? Well, now you can see. And your darkness only lasted a, a minute or two. Imagine what it must have been like for the blind man who had never been able to see before. And imagine there must have been all these people around him and he probably wanted to find out which one was Jesus so he could thank him. But he didn't see Jesus the first time. He only heard him. So when Jesus approached him and he said, do you believe in the son of man? He said, show him to me. Probably because he wanted to thank him and Jesus smiled and said, I am him. I am the one who healed you. And the blind man fell to his knees and he said, I trust you, Lord. Now, I know while we're living under this quarantine, it's kind of like we're living in the darkness, too, a little bit. I mean, we can see our houses. We can see our family members in the house with us. Maybe we can see a bit of our neighborhood if we go outside for a walk. But we can't see our school and we can't see Mary, Mother of God Church and we can't see our dance studio, and, and we can't see a lot of things that are happening outside of our homes. So in a way, we're kind of living in some darkness too. But our challenge is like the challenge of the blind man, to be able to say, I trust you, Lord. Even if I can't see, even if I don't understand, I trust you, Lord. So my challenge to you tonight, boys and girls, when you're going to bed, is I want you as you're falling off to sleep, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to say to the darkness, I trust you, Lord. Now we're going to end our liturgy of the word by doing our prayers of the faithful. Your prayers are very powerful. I know Jesus hears you. So I'm going to ask that you join in these prayers with me, okay? So I'm going to read these prayers and you're going to respond by saying, Lord, hear our prayer, okay? For all of those who are seriously ill at this time, that they may feel God's love and healing 
Let us pray to the Lord. Repeat after me. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the medical workers, the police, the first responders, our government leaders, and all those who are working hard at this time to help others. May God give them strength and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Repeat after me. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are lonely, scared, and confused at this time, that they can feel God's love for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the people of Mary, Mother of God Church, and all of their prayers and needs that they offer up to God in the silence of their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Repeat after me. Lord, hear our prayer. And boys and girls, I'll be back next Sunday with another Liturgy of the Word. I hope you'll join me. And until then, I hope you continue to pray and be able to say with your whole entire heart, I trust you, Lord.